What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Black Men's Career. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about culture vultures. Now, you might be asking, well, what is a culture vulture? A culture vulture, by definition, is someone from another community that comes into the black community trying to fit in to our own style of culture and persona only for the benefit of economic gain. I'm gonna say that again. You might be asking the question, what is a culture vulture? You might have heard this in the hip hop world. You might have heard this in new lingo. What is a culture vulture? A culture vulture is somebody from another community outside of the black community that tries to blend in amongst black culture, but it's only for the sake of economic gain. It's not because of they're so enamored with black people, they love being black and they wish that they could just copy the swag of black Americans. Culture vultures are people that come from other communities that see large economic opportunities in the things that we do, being the trendsetters of the world, and they make businesses behind these things, and they are only interacting with you because you are the commodity that they are selling in their personal business. Now, like I said, a lot of you guys have probably heard this term in the hip hop world, whether it was from Damon Dash or others that have been uh, in the hip hop community. And you might be asking the question, well, if there are culture vultures, why are there so many in the black world? Well, I wanna give you three reasons why that is, okay? Reason number one is because of the fact that by and large, the black community is lacking in terms of wealth ownership. We do not own many of the establishments that we patronize from day to day, okay? So I'm trying to make this entertaining, but I'm also trying to make this educational because at the end of the day, I want us as a people to be as successful as possible. You have other leaders and other communities that are doing their thing for their people, and God is trying to use me to be able to help be a vessel of light to my own people. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is ownership. Okay, now if you look in the hip hop world, you look at a lot of rappers. All of them are the entertainers on the label, but rarely ever are they the owners of a label. Many of the uh, rap songs that you might be hearing in this day and age are largely influenced by people of other communities that are on the executive panel of many of these record companies. And they're the ones that are actually dictating what types of content should be put in different rap songs. So we are always the worker, but we are rarely ever the owner. And many of these ARs or executive producers in these record labels they come into, you know, the rap culture, the R&B culture, these different cultures that are predominated by black people where we've actually set the trends as the innovators uh, of these art forms in society today. And they come into it because, again, they are seeing dollar signs. They're seeing economic benefits because of the fact that we will be the entertainer or we'll be the performer we never ever really take the time to delve deeply into owning the companies where our entertainment is actually distributed. Even if you look at BET, BET is not run by black folks. There's many different companies that claim to have some type of black association, but in actuality, the people that are running things behind the scenes uh, are people from other communities, largely Caucasian. And so it's all about us needing to have a sense of ownership for ourselves. This leads to the second point. Because you might be asking, well, Uzziah, well, whose fault is it that we're not the owners? Do we blame the white man for that? Do we blame others for that? The reason why we are not owners in many respects 
is because of the fact that we have a self inferiority complex that suggests that we have to go to other communities for validation for the things that we do. Okay. That's another uh, major part as to why there are so many culture vultures in society today. And it's not just the rap world. You know, I remember growing up uh, in South Central LA, many times when it would come to many businesses, you would never expect people from other communities uh, having their own soul food restaurants, <laughs> making black food, selling and producing black food, but the people that are actually cooking and running the business are not black people. But now in today's day and age, you could literally go through different hoods in America and the people that are selling you the greens or the wings or the barbecue chicken, many of the uh, traditional elements of black food and black culture, it has been appropriated by other communities that have seen lucrative businesses on the strength of doing this all because of the fact that we have not taken the ownership ourselves. This doesn't mean that there has been no black business owners that have stepped up to the plate. You know, a lot of times being a black business owner is very difficult. We have uh, a lot of challenges that are specific to us. I'm not trying to discredit our people and make it seem like we're not trying to do this at all. But the true reality of it is we're not doing it enough. Black people only control 2% of all of the businesses in America. And one of the reasons why that is, and it's statistically proven, is the fact that we are oftentimes uh, programmed to look to other communities to be validated for the things that we do. I'm going to write this down, okay? Number two is validation. So, Let's say that you are somebody that is a hip hop artist. You're a performer. A lot of times you may not feel as though you haven't made it big in the rap world unless you've been signed to a certain record label where the owner of that label is someone from a different community. A lot of times certain brothers don't feel good if they're operating independently or if they want to start their own label that may not be as big, you know, as other major corporations like a Def Jam or Sony, etc. A lot of times we do not feel validated until we have a seat at the table with some of the biggest corporations in the world. A lot of times we are very quick to uh, discredit one another if we don't have some major brand name or status symbol associated with us to help validate our sense of worth in society, okay? And so one of the things that we've got to stop doing in the black community, as we're talking about this on Black Friday, is we've got to stop feeling like we only have made it once other communities tell us that we make it. We only feel like we're going to a good school if it is a school that has been, you know, uh, vouched for by other communities. We're, we're only in a good business or a good job, a good occupation, if it's an occupation that's being co-signed by somebody in a different community. We have to have a sense of self-ownership to validate our own efforts and our own aims. If we stay in this current bubble that we're in today, where culture vultures are prevalent, we will always be the worker, but never the owner. Even you're seeing this right now in the NFL. You're seeing how there are regulations that are coming down from the executive board where you can't even be a black man on an NFL team that takes a knee all as a symbol of the police brutality that's being waged against you in your own communities. Now you're going to be fined, you're going to be sanctioned, all of these different uh, penalties are going to happen, all because of the fact that we are the player, but we're never the owner, right? We are always the 
consumer of things, but we're never the producer. And so the reason why this video is so important is not to um, discredit anybody else for what they're doing, but for us to look within ourselves for the gifts that we have. The same way that God has given us gifts to have, you know, massive intellect, great uh, personas, lots of charisma, all these talents and gifts, why do we feel like the only time where we've actually quote unquote made it is if we get a stamp of approval working for the corporations of someone else outside of our community to tell us how good that we are. We're never going to get to a certain uh, place of excellence, reach a certain pinnacle until we take the opportunities and the ideas and the creativity that we have and we invest in ourselves. And that's what every other community of people do. You don't see uh, Europeans coming to look at black folks to get validation on whether or not their business idea is a good one or their skill set uh, is sufficient. They have their own system of economic structure. This is what we need as well. A lot of times, check out this video. It's called uh, The Psychology of Selling to the Negro. It was a, a, a documentary that was actually produced in the 1950s. And in this documentary, it actually broke down how most major corporations know that their number one consumer of retail goods are black people because black people will pay top dollar just to be able to have a high end name so that way we could feel a certain uh, sense of worth that we've always felt like we've been lacking from the time that we've got to America. You see what I'm saying? When we were in slavery, we started to feel as though we were not um, as good as other people. That was much of the uh, programming that was beaten into us in chattel slavery. Not trying to make this a whole history lesson, but I'm trying to show you this is real. This culture vulture phenomenon, it's more than just a, a, a cool phrase or a cool saying. It is actually a disease in the black community. We willfully allow other cultures of people to come and exploit black traditions and black heritage all because of the fact that many of us feel like we're not doing something until other communities of people are involved. That's the reason why a lot of times speaking on issues like this, people stay quiet. They don't want to say anything about it because they're too worried about, well, what will this person feel? What will my coworker feel like if I actually said this on record? What would my... Uh, colleague feel like? What would my friend at school have to say? <laughs> and you suppress all of these thoughts largely because of the fact that we rely upon other communities to be able to get by. That brings me to the third and final point. The only way that we can ever overcome systemic uh, cultural appropriation is if we put our resources together to collectively support each other, okay? I'm gonna write this down, number three. The only way that you're gonna get past these culture vultures that come into your community for no other reason than to make a dollar off of your people. They're not coming and bringing this money back to you. They're not taking the money and trying to put your kids through college. They're seeing the economic benefits of many of the talents and the gifts that you take for granted every single day. And they create a business model around it that allows them to make top dollar. And then they're going to go back to their communities and give it to their own people. It's not that they're so genuinely enamored with black culture. I'm not talking about those type of people. I'm specifically in this video talking about the droves of people that are in society today 
that are seeing that we are not stepping up as owners in our own communities. So they say, okay, I'm going to run everything for you. If you don't want to be the owner of a soul food restaurant because you feel like it's demeaning, then I'll tell you what. I'll be the business owner. I'll bring the capital to the table. I'll get the staff. I'll put people on the payroll. And all you do is provide the recipe. And again, this is how the machine operates. When we allow this to happen in our communities, we will never find ourselves in a position of preeminence or power. We will always be denizens in second class because people are coming into our communities and they're taking the money that should be recycled through our own communities and it's going back into other communities without representation, okay? I don't wanna beat a dead horse here. This is about it, but I really want you to take the time and think about this. Do you really think that if you, as a black man, try to go into an Asian community and start up a Chinese restaurant, do you think that Asian people, by and large, would not feel validated about the quality of their food until you came in there and started making the dishes that they have uh, traditionally been known for making and setting up Asian restaurants? Chances are not. <laughs> Chances are, by and large, you wouldn't even be patronized that much because of the fact that they are working together communally among themselves. They would look at you in many ways as a culture vulture. Now, this is not to speak for everybody's behavior. Obviously, I'm generalizing here. But this is a part of intelligent group economics for different cultures. This happens in uh, Caucasian communities, right? This happens in uh, East Indian communities. This happens in Arab communities. This happens in just about every other community but ourselves. We now have to be the role models of our people. We've got to step away from just seeing ourselves as just a pawn in the game. And we can only really have a seat at the table once we see ourselves as the boss. If we rely on other communities to dictate to us our education, our uh, spirituality, our economic structure and business, if we go to you know everybody else for the answers, at what point do we see uh, the goodness within ourselves? Some of you guys, you may not understand what I'm saying, but just give it time, all right? But today's video is about breaking down culture vultures. I know that you've probably seen them. You can leave me a comment and you can let me know about certain cultures, culture vultures that you may know. You've seen people that have come out of different communities and try to play the game and butter up to us all because of the fact that we are not pushing them out so that way we can make the money for ourselves, okay? Not telling y'all to just go out and be extremists and do this and do that. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if you saw more sense of ownership within yourself, you too would recognize that it's unacceptable for other people to make more money off of us than we could be making by ourselves, all right? So with that, make sure you subscribe to this video. Make sure that you download the Empire Builder because I'm trying to show you how to be able to build an empire for yourself, how you can see yourself as the owner for the first time ever, how to be able to do it from scratch, regardless of what level of schooling you've got, regardless of what level of uh, business savvy that you've got, I'm trying to give you all of the keys right here because I'm trying to do what I can to help black men become as successful as possible. I love y'all. I'll see y'all on the next episode of Black Men's Career.